A teacher gave her class of second graders a lesson on the magnet and what it does. The next day in a written test, she included this question. My full name has six letters. The first one is M. I pick up things. What am I? When the test papers were turned in, the teacher was astonished to find that almost 50% of the students answered the question with the word mother. <laughs> Welcome. My name is Miranda Pierce. I am a Pacific Northwest wife and stay at home mom, the former bling boss of Pierce's paparazzi. And this is making yourself at home. I am so excited because I wanted to try to do a little something special for Mother's Day, right? I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out all of you mamas. This podcast, though its principles can apply to anyone who wants to better their life, it was created by and for mothers. So I see you and thank you so much for your continued strength. I would not be the mom that I am today without your guys' examples. And I, again, be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity <laughs> to shout out my own mom and mother-in-law. You are the strongest women that I know and your support and influence in our lives is unmatched. So happy Mother's Day to all of you moms out there. I going to get real for a second. <laughs> Just a little personal here. Um, so we, Aaron and I, my husband and I were married six years before we had our oldest, Noel. Um, and that was a conscious decision to wait that long to have kids. <laughs> and in that time, I knew that I always wanted to be a mom. That was something that I had always planned on um, growing up. That was something that I'd always desired was to have a family. And I was afraid because in that time frame between getting married and when we got pregnant, I was really afraid that that desire wasn't going to show up to be a mom, that that switch wasn't going to flip. One, for selfish reasons, <laughs> because I was working full time. I was going to school part time. We had gotten to this rhythm, right, with life. But also just out of my own fears, I think. Whether or not I would be enough. If I'd be good at it. Um, if I would be able to prepare children to go out into this world that seems to be getting increasingly darker and the things that we are dealing with are all at our fingertips. <laughs> Everything's at the forefront. Um, there's so much negativity just, just there. And I think I was worried. Um, part of the... The word, some, there were some words that were uh, spoken by President Russell M. Nelson. He gave an address called A Plea to My Sisters. Um, this was back in October 2015. That kind of helped me flip that switch and kind of offered me some encouragement and in what I want, showed me what I wanted to be, right? So I wanted to share a story from that address about his, uh, his late wife, Dancel. And it says, I will always be grateful for the life changing influence she had on me in all aspects of my life, including my pioneering effort in open heart surgery. 58 years ago, I was asked to operate upon a little girl gravely ill from congenital heart disease. Her older brother had previously died of a similar condition. Her parents pleaded for help. 
I was not optimistic but about the outcome, but I vowed to do all in my power to save her life. Despite my best efforts, the child died. Later, the same parents brought another daughter to me, then just 16 months old, also born with a malformed heart. Again, at their request, I re performed an operation. This child also died. The thir this third heartbreaking loss in one family literally undid me. I went home grief-stricken. I threw myself upon our living room floor and cried all night long. Dancel stayed by my side, listening as I repeatedly declared that I would never perform another heart operation. Then, around five in the morning, Dancel looked at me and lovingly asked, are you finished crying? Then get dressed, go back to the lab, go to work. You need to learn more. If you quit now, others will have to painfully learn what you already know. How I needed my wife's vision, grit, and love, I went back to work and learned more. If it weren't for Dancel, inspired prodding, I would not have pursued open heart surgery and would not have been prepared to do the operation in 1972 that saved the life of Spencer W. Kimball. Sisters, do you realize the breadth and scope of your influence? I, he goes on to say, we know that the accumulating act of all creation is the, or was the creation of woman. I long to be a woman of this caliber that can teach her family, that could support her husband in this inspired way. Some days I do. Other days I don't. But even on those days that I don't, I am exactly who my family needs. I still have days where those questions that plagued me before having kids come crawling back into my mind. On those days, <laughs> If you have, if that sounds familiar to you, maybe this will offer you some encouragement. Rachel Mar Marie Martin in The Brave Art of Motherhood said this, quote, my kids don't have a perfect mom. They have me. Imperfect, but I try. Boy, do I try. Sometimes it feels too small, not enough, like I'm letting them down. Sometimes I have no clue what to do, but I will show up, stand there, and cheer them on loudly. Maybe I'm not perfect. Maybe they don't get everything. Maybe life has good and bad days and a whole bunch of normal. But that's okay. I taught them to be real, to show up, that it is good to proudly support those you love. That family is about being together. And that the best gift of all is in fact love. Perfection is overrated. Um, a few episodes back, I encouraged this um, exercise. And I'm going to challenge you guys to revisit this. I, if any point you feel like this, you have one of those days where you feel like you're not enough, you're not doing enough, that mom, being a mom is just too hard, as we all have those days, make a list of all the things that bring you joy in motherhood and be as specific as possible. It could be, <laughs> I wrote my list, it's been a while, I need to do it again. I, when I wrote my list, it was like blowing bubbles and like dance parties and board games and like specific things that we do 
together, reading, you know, you name it. Write them down and then refer back to that list. Make doing some of those things, not all, but some, some of those things a priority daily. Nothing prepares you for how difficult and rewarding motherhood is. But know that you're enough. I see you. I'm in your corner. We're in this together. And if you have any doubt, go listen or go watch the episode of Bluey called Baby Race. And I'm going to quote Bella from that episode. You're doing great. Tune in next week, Thursday, for another episode. Until then, have the best week.